Hey, JP here. Today, I'm going to show you magnetohydrodynamic propulsion in action. I'm going to slow it down a bit and run it in water so you can actually see it directly. Now, we're developing hybrid plasma rocket engines. These are half electric and half chemical. One of the components on the electric side is what's called magnetohydrodynamics, or MHD. This is one of our test firings. MHD is simply using magnets and electric current to accelerate stuff. In rocket engines, that stuff is plasma. Standing in for plasma today will be water that we're going to add some ions to. This is not much different than an electric motor. An electric motor, the charged stuff, is the electrons moving in the wires. In an MHD unit, the stuff moving is shot out the back. And just like in an electric motor, it can be a generator. If you run it backwards, an MHD system can be used to extract electrical power out of a rocket engine or other plasma source. This is the core unit. The copper bars act as the electrodes where we apply the electric current. They are glued down to a cement plate that we've cast into a 3D printed mold. These cement blocks on the side form the channel for the plasma or whatever other fluid that we pass through. The channel here is tapered, so it aligns with the thrust of the rocket exhaust gases. It's not really needed for the potassium water tests we're about to do. Before we start, hit that subscribe button and help keep the research going. And now, on to the tests. This entire experiment is going to take place inside this Tupperware container. First, we're just going to set it face down here. This is a stack of two neodymium magnets we're going to use to give the system its magnetic field. We're going to place the magnet so that the south pole is facing down into the container when it's upright. And then we're just going to tape it into place. Now go the electrodes and the channel. We're just going to center the electrodes right over the magnet and then tape these down as well. Now we're going to measure the magnetic field strength right at the base of the electrodes. And it looks like we have around 380 little more milliteslas. Now I'm going to add the water. I'm just going to put in enough to cover the electrodes. Water is a poor substitute for plasma, which is just a charged gas or flame. With water, there's nothing for the magnets to grab onto. We're going to start with a 9 volt battery. The battery is taped down so it doesn't get caught by the magnet. Just as a safety note here, clear your test area of metal when working with big magnets. Especially, and I say this from experience, move the scissors away. <laughs> I'm just going to attach the ground clip and away we go. Now it looks like absolutely nothing is going on. I'm going to add a drop of food coloring so we can see just a little better. As it disperses, if you can look carefully you can see the magnets are starting to pull and starting to move the water down. But still, not very impressive. We need to add some ions to the water to give it something for the magnets to grab onto. Then, we'll start adding some more power. Now we're going to add salt to the water. Because salt will ionize really well and give a few charged particles for the magnets to clamp onto. So just give it a little stir here. Now 
Now we'll connect the ground. And you already see it start moving a little bit. Let's put another drop of food coloring in. And now you can see that it's really going to town. Those bubbles you see forming are the electricity breaking up the water into hydrogen and oxygen molecules. To get a little better ionization rate, we're going to use potassium chloride instead of sodium chloride or salt. A great source of that is a salt substitute new salt, which is 100% potassium chloride. So we'll just mix this in instead. Okay, now we're going to connect the battery. You can see it's starting to go there. Put a little drop of food coloring in. See, now it's really, really going. And that's just with the 9 volt battery. Let's put some more power on this. Let's pump a little more juice in. To do that, we'll need more than a 9 volt battery. This is an Emmentech 30 volt 10 amp switching power supply that I got off of Amazon. If you're interested, there is a link to it in the description below. Let's go ahead and add the water. Oop. Need to get another jar. Get it good and stir it up here. Almost to saturation where water can't hold any more potassium and you can start to see the crystals not able to dissolve. All set. We'll start slow. You can just now start to see the bubbles form, and it's starting to flow. We're right around now with the 9 volt battery was putting out. Okay, 20 volts, and 3 amps. Hey, we're at 29.5 volts and a little over 6 amps, and it's really moving. Going to put a little food coloring in. Say no moving parts, it's just the magnetic field and the current just driving the fluids through. The electrodes are getting corroded like crazy, and that's what everything is turning the water brown. Now that is magnetohydrodynamics in action. At 30 volts and six amps, we're running at about 180 watts. The big engines on our airship 
will have about 15 megawatts from the onboard solar to feed them. When we're running this on rocket engines, we have an additional magnets on top as well. This almost doubles the magnetic field strength and dramatically increases the flow. Help us keep the research going by subscribing to our YouTube channel. It doesn't cost a thing, and all you have to do is click on the button that looks like this. MHD engines have been in the news a lot, and you may not even know it. You know, when you hear about the nuclear rocket engines to Mars, most of the time, MHD engines are what they're talking about. The nuclear part just generates the electrical power. Folks have been researching and experimenting with MHD systems for over 80 years now. They have put them in boats, spacecraft, and even power plants. Most of what we're doing is not new. We're just trying to get it out of the lab and into the sky. This is JP. Thank you for watching. JP Aerospace, America's other space program.